I am Sebastian. Today we are going to discuss about uh, protein trafficking to mitochondria. We will look at this topic at three levels. Primarily we shall look at the, the structure of mitochondria, mitochondria and its function. Then we shall look at uh, how exactly the process of uh, trafficking is uh, conducted. How protein trafficking is carried out. And finally, we shall look at uh, uh, how this protein gets integrated. When you look at the structure of mitochondria, you know that it has an outer membrane, it has an inner membrane space then it has an inner membrane, then it has a matrix. So how exactly proteins are integrated into each of these locations? So these are going to be the overall uh, outline of these videos. Uh, please watch all the videos one after the other to get a complete picture on the protein trafficking to uh, mitochondria. Let us begin with the first one. That is especially looking at the structure and the function of mitochondria. We are aware that uh, the mitochondria as well as chloroplast, uh, they all multiply from, uh, from an existing mitochondria or a chloroplast. Mitochondria is a dynamic organ. It is constantly dividing. It is highly active. And uh, this mitochondria, if you look at uh, uh, the size is about 0 0.5 to 1 micrometer is the diameter of a mitochondria. And mitochondria will account for about 22% volume of a cell. And remember it is capsulated, it is a kind of a capsule separated from the cytoplasm. 22% volume is occupied. There are so many proteins present in mitochondria. Now, um, mitochondria use energy primarily from pyruvate and from fatty acid. So these are the two energy sources for mitochondria. Mitochondria is a very interesting organ. It can travel long distance. For example, there are mitochondria that can travel about a uh, one meter long axon it is able to travel um, this mitochondria has a very close association with the endoplasmic reticulum remember endoplasmic reticulum will be the site where proteins will be synthesized using the ribosomes from there it is connecting to mitochondria there is a close association not only in terms of protein synthesis there is also a very close association in terms of the membrane structure. If you look at the, the membrane structure of endoplasmic reticulum and mitochondria, there is a lot of similarity, especially in the outer mitochondrial membrane structure. You, know, you are aware that uh, the inner mitochondrial membrane produces a lot of uh, uh, phospholipids. Phospholipid like cardiolipid, which is peculiar, produced by the mitochondria. And also, uh, phosphoglycerol, phosphatidic acid, all these are produced by mitochondria, then given to endoplasmic reticulum. Endoplasmic reticulum will convert them into other phospholipids and then they are incorporated into the plasma membrane of other cell organelles. So, therefore, if you look at uh, mitochondria, it is a dynamic, always active organ. You will find them mostly wherever there are there is a lot of activity going on or where energy is required for example in the flagellum of sperm cells you will find them in plenty you will find them plenty in the cardiac muscles especially in the myofibrils they are plenty they are abundant so this is the overall uh, in the network in the understanding of a mitochondria if you look at the functions of mitochondria it plays so many key functions. For example, let us try to put some of the functions on the board. One of the important functions of mitochondria is it will provide energy. So, 
we are aware that mitochondria produce energy in the form of ATP through oxidative phosphorylation. So this is a ready source of energy. That is one of the functions. If the second function of mitochondria is uh, mitochondria make NAD plus available. So NAD plus is the redox potential is made available by mitochondria. Very important function. Another important function of a mitochondria is it gives a supply of NADPH. We are aware that NADPH is required for uh, its reducing equivalent. So this NADPH is made, can be made available by the mitochondria. Another important function of a mitochondria is it provides the carbon skeleton. It provides a carbon skeleton for synthesizing several biomolecules. We have learned in earlier videos, especially when we were discussing about fatty acid metabolism, how citrate is transported from mitochondria into the cytoplasm, convert, getting converted back into oxaloacetic acid and acetyl CoA. And this acetyl CoA becomes the starting material for synthesizing fatty acid. So that is another function of mitochondria. A fifth function of mitochondria is it is highly adaptive. Especially when someone undergoes a starving condition. Mitochondria are the, the place where proteins degraded, brought there, amino acids are degraded and it helps in providing energy. So that is this kind of adaptive function is, is attributed to mitochondria. Another important function of mitochondria is in production of heme. So heme production out of the eight steps, four steps are being carried out in the mitochondria. All these points you can elaborate by looking into appropriate uh, places in a book and you can elaborate. This, the purpose here is to summarize all these two to show how important is this mitochondria and how many proteins are involved. That is the main thrust of looking at the functions of mitochondria. Another important function of mitochondria is to deal with the urea cycle. Two important reactions of urea cycle, especially for removal of uh, ammonia ions. So, another important function of mitochondria. Uh, another important function of mitochondria is to maintain the calcium buffer. So we are aware that calcium is present in the calcisomes and uh, in the endoplasmic reticulum or the sarcoplasmic reticulum. And this buffering is assisted by, uh, mitochondria has a role in buffering this, the, uh, maintaining the level of uh, calcium. Another important function of mitochondria is to uh, maintain the level of iron sulfur proteins. So, as we know, if the iron sulfur proteins are so important in electron transport chain, and the level of this iron sulfur protein, these are synthesized in the mitochondria, if the level of this iron sulfur proteins play a crucial role in regulating in the expression or the activity of certain gene, genes and these are correlated with the occurrence of uh, cancer. So therefore means stabilizing the nucleic acid, iron sulfur proteins are needed so mitochondria has a direct role in, in regulating in the production of uh, iron sulfur proteins. And if the last important function of mitochondria is to uh, synthesize certain phospholipids like carbiolipin, carbiolipin, uh, phosphoglycerate, uh, phosphatidic acid, all these are synthesized by mitochondria. Then they are, then these are given to the endoplasmic reticulum. Endoplasmic reticulum will take it up and then it produces other seven phospholipids. So these are some of the functions of mitochondria and you can appreciate how many different proteins must be present in this mitochondria? Then only these, this mitochondria is capable of uh, carrying out all these functions. Um, now, these proteins, some may be produced in the mitochondria, 
but most of them are produced by the the nuclear it is produced by the nuclear genome and it is produced in the cytoplasm now we are going to look at how these proteins are going to be transported from in the cytoplasm into the appropriate location before we look at the uh, that particular aspect let us also say a few lines about the how the mitochondria would have originated if you look closely at the structure of mitochondrial membrane it has the property of prokaryotic structure and there is a theory proposed that is called endo symbionts theory according to this theory what would have likely happened is here is a prokaryotic cell so it's a prokaryotic cell with its genome and one possibility is this prokaryotic cell is engulfed by another prokaryotic cell that also has its genome now what is likely to happen is this prokaryotic cell is engulfed so we are engulfing here is engulfed now it's very evident that this cell has two membrane one of its own and another one this is the first membrane and the second membrane is the from the invagination of the in the prokaryotic cell which engulfed it so over millions of years it is possible that this portion established its own identity that has ultimately got converted into a mitochondria and this is the hypothesis that is proposed and which we believe today and the same applies to even to chloroplast as well so what we have done in this first part of this video is we looked at the, the important functions of mitochondria how it has originated and we have seen that so many proteins are required and now we are going to see how these proteins are uh, in the, in the, in the cytoplasmic proteins are getting integrated into or transported and getting integrated in the mitochondrial membrane or in the matrix.